What's up, Sam Ashers, and welcome to the Spotlight. I'm Dave Stutz, and I'm here in New York City at our flagship store, hanging out with the greatest band of all time, Thrice. What's going on, guys? Well, it's a fact. Yeah. It's good, right? It's, it's undisputable. Who would argue with that? Uh, many, many people. <laughs> yeah. perhaps, perhaps. Not me, that's for sure. Uh, ever been to Sam Ash before? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Cool. Well, welcome back. We are certainly grateful to have you. Not just Sam Ash people, but New York City. Very, very grateful to have you. So you're here torn, right? So we're playing Hammerstein tonight. Excited for that? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Nice. Played last night too, right? Yep. How'd that show go? It's good. It's great. I had a, I had a really good time. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I was looking up uh, last night. Could not find a ticket. Tickets are totally sold out, so that's great. Good sign, yeah. definitely for sure. And uh, on the road with uh, Bring Me the Horizon. Right? How's that going? What's it like touring with another band like that? Oh, they're 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 intense. They have like so much uh, production and stuff. It's re it's really cool really? to see like a band that has taken that step and they're bringing yeah. it to. Um, I don't know. Just more of an experience. Yeah, it's just awesome. Yeah. I don't think we've been on a tour. Why pass I don't think we've been on a tour with a band with a headlining band that operates at this level of really? production. Like we've seen it at festivals. I think like outside of them, the biggest band we've been out with is probably Deftones. Oh, cool. And they have a decent sized production, but it's not mm. like this. This is like some of the craziest lights I've seen. Wow. So it's, what about Offstage? Do really cool. you guys hang out? You guys They're pretty quiet the and so are we. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey. I mean they were they were cool enough to come in and introduce themselves uh day two. Nice. And they're nice. Okay. Shy awesome. guys. <laughs> we'll get to we'll get to know him a little bit more as the as the tour goes on, but we're sure. only like a week deep, so that's exciting, man. Yeah. Right at the start of the tour, that's great. Yeah, you know, you brought up festivals. I can't help but uh, want to ask you about uh, Warp Tour and what you guys think about mm -hmm. that kind of running its course and kind of where we're at in our in our industry right now and, and, and where we're headed with things like Warp Tour shutting down because you know you guys are Warp Tour vets. You know, what's what's that like for you? Any thoughts on Warp Tour? I mean, I think it's. It ran its course, but I don't think festivals touring like that have that, you know necessarily run their course. I think it's just everything's got cycles, and yeah. it, it ran a long time. Yeah, yeah. twenty five years or twenty it had a great some odd years. Sure. Yeah. What was it like playing Warped Tour back in the day? Was it? It's a grind, but it's cool. I mean, it's, it's definitely different, right? It's yeah. It's, it's intense, from what I've heard. The weather can get gnarly. Uh, not you never really know when you're playing. Yeah, not knowing when you're gonna play is weird. Um, but it's cool. I mean, it's another opportunity to play in front of people who have never seen you before right? and expand your audience, and that's kind of the name and of the game. It's definitely like a different... Uh, it's like a whole society on mm -hmm. tour together. Like it's this, yeah. So there's a bunch of... It's not just like, hey, there's like two bands. It's just like everyone is out milling about all yeah. the time. And we built some pretty great friendships through that tour, like... Bands like Glassjaw or Poison the Well, yeah. like, or you get to hang again with bands that you yeah. played with before too. Yeah, no, I really know what cool. you mean. I actually got to interview a band a couple of years ago at Warped Tour, and behind the stages, it's like little villages that everybody just—it's mm -hmm. a traveling, it's very clicky circus, man. It's <laughs> yeah. it's awesome, but that's really cool. Yeah. So you guys are touring a brand new album came out in September. Talking about Palms, and uh, new new label, new record. New everything. How's that going? How's the relationship with the label? I mean, it's not the first label you've ever transferred to, but how's the relationship with Epitaph and the new album and all that? Uh, it's been great so far. Yeah. Um, I think especially, like, there's, there's a good vibe there. Um, really? People are hardworking, just humble, cool people. Uh, nice. It's not a lot of bullshit. It's just perfect. They've got a, a really great European team, too, that's really dialed in with the team over here, which mm. we've never really had. Um, so it's been cool to go over there and, and really work with those people and see them just kind of killing it with press and stuff over there. Um, Sounds amazing. Yeah. So we're heading back to Europe, too, at the end of this year. So we're excited about that. Yeah. Nice. I mean, we, we grew refused. up listening to Epitaph bands. So cool. to be a part of that history in some way is really cool. and. Um, Brett being the head of the label, he's been in a band, mm. a punk band that was an oh, indie so band and then signed with a major and we've done all that stuff too. So mm. he's operating the level or uh, with a level of knowledge that I feel like a lot of label heads don't really have. They're more businessmen yeah. operating in that world. So it's cool. And you need that, right? I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. You need that. Now, 
we uh, we put on identity crisis on the way here. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> we're sorry. But hey, you, I, you can't help but but go back to the beginning and see where it was. And, and you guys, you say that, but everyone was smiling in the car. They loved it. I mean, I'm I'm always interested from the point of view of you know it's it's funny. It's called identity crisis because of your 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 emotions and your feelings and who you are as a person when you write that stuff versus now all these years later. Very different sound. Very different moods. Very different ideas. So how, how how different is this album as far as where you are now as people than Identity Crisis way back in 2001? I mean, it's got to be killer, right? I mean, I think at the core of it, it's still the same, really. Yeah? It's, I mean, even back then, we were just kind of doing what we wanted to do, mm. you know, as far as, like, hey, this... I don't know, we're really influenced by this kind of hardcore band, and then we like this melodic element of this. And I mean, at the time, it was, a, you know, something that felt kind of fresh and new. And mm. um, so I think at the core of it, that's kind of still what we're doing is just, you know, we have a whole slew of different kinds of music. And even between the four of us, you know, we're pretty varied uh, musical tastes. And so I think we're, you know, it's all that just converging and, uh, yeah, so I mean, I think at the core it's it's similar, but I think obviously twenty, sure. almost twenty years later, we're pretty d different people. So yeah. it comes you know, across a little different. Yeah. Absolutely, and my uh, my compatriot Ben over here that you guys met, he he was of the opinion that that album was setting a trend that by the time other people picked up and tried to emulate it, you guys were kind of moving on. It's like all right, we set the trend, and now we're just moving forward and just writing what we want, evolving how we want. I mean, would you would you agree with that or? Or you just don't even. I mean, I think it that. was that and illusion were definitely combining some stuff in a different way than uh, I think had been done, and it had a lot of influence, some good, some bad. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I that stuff's always funny how that works. Just you can never predict like what anyone picks up or doesn't yeah. and how, could you? how anyone's going to respond in the time or later but yeah. Um, yeah well guys one thing we're curious about too you know so, some people know but some people don't understand how grueling the industry can really be I mean you have to you have to go into the studio you have to write an album you have to just rip everything apart put something together then you have to go tour it you're away from your family you're working every day it's certainly not a cakewalk it can be really grueling so I mean what keeps you guys inspired to to keep doing this year after year after year, like it, whether it be other musicians or or whatnot, what keeps you inspired? I think I would speak for all of us in just saying that the it's all like one process, and if it was just, I think if it was just one of any of the parts, it would it, it would not be as satisfying. But creating the music is, I think, what we're really always looking forward to and which is mm. also the most difficult part in a sense in the sense of like actually getting all these ideas together and and figuring out what you're really going to do with it but then playing the songs live is is kind of like the completion of the that creative process right um, kind of celebrating after the album right Go yeah so it. it's it's like if you were just playing live all the time and not further in the creative process it wouldn't be that satisfying but i think also if you were just creating it and never letting it live outside that um, I don't know I think for us being a very like I don't know live oriented band like our live show has always I think always been better than our recorded music <laughs> it's uh, mm -hmm. it, we've learned slowly how to get that better onto on the tape but um, yeah so it's it's all I think one big piece and as grueling as it uh, can be uh, there is something that's kind of beautiful about that cycle of like letting this thing like develop and live and then you're like I mean right after you finish a record you're already like I feel like that's when your brain starts going the most to be like oh mm. but I want to do this now. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah you've trained it to be creative this whole time and now you're at the end of an album your brain is still triggered to be creative and keep going right yeah I Especially at that point, because there's no pressure at the moment. It's oh, just yeah, like the fun sense. part of yeah. like, yeah. sure. Oh, this is a fun idea. That's awesome. Well, you know, speaking of touring, I mean, here at Sam Ash, obviously we're a music tour, so we're 
uh, obsessed with gear, things like that. One of the things we always are very curious about with touring bands is how different the touring rig is compared to the recording rig. Is it a lot different? Is it similar? Like, what do you have in the studio versus what's on tour? Uh, I'll go first because mine's simple, but uh, right now it's exactly the same because exactly I'm same. using uh, Helix and so okay. I recorded all my stuff on the new record. With that Helix. makes it a lot easier, right? It's uh, a great board. It's a fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so all the tones are off that and uh, I think it sounds great. It's very, very easy to use and program and um, yeah, so absolutely, that's very cool. cool. But, uh, it's pretty similar for me as well. Okay. I, I mean, I, I I like to just keep it simple. So um, it's Vox AC30. Mm. Uh, it's kind of like my main thing, and that's what I play live yeah. in, in the studio as well. Sure. Um, and I usually kind of pair that with something else, um, a Supro, uh, Thun, no, Duotone? Duotone, nice. I think it's one. Do we have a Supro here? Yeah. I um, thought we had one. We may have the AC back here, but that's okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. So that's that's kind of what I'm using live, uh, both combos. Mm. Um, and in the studio, I use that as well, but sometimes I would, Ed has a, a JMP. Cool. Um, so we would use that, pair that with the Vox AC30 as well. Um, the guitar setup's a little different, just because I don't, I don't like to take my nicer, older, vintage guitars out on the road. Totally I do sometimes, but I just got like a newer Les Paul that... <laughs> I don't really mind beating up. Perfect. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the only different one because I have my Fender Jag uh, baritone Very that cool. I use in the studio and on the road. Same with my Nash Telly. So yeah, pretty Those similar. Are beautiful. Great yeah. selection. Yeah. Nice. Um, as far as bass stuff goes, I pretty much use the same thing as well, but I also have uh, an old Ampeg B15 that we found on tour. Magic song. It's a magical amp. How and cool I would that? say that's a majority of my bass tone on records um, since Beggars, Magic. I would say. Um, it's mean, just... It, it just doesn't put out enough sound for you. Like yeah, I couldn't... I, if I could stack, like, four of them. Mm, yeah. But um, those B-15s are, like, the flip-top heads. Where you oh, would, yeah, those yeah. are neat. Those are um, really cool. They'd be pretty fragile on the yeah, road. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, I use the same basses as I do on tour. I have like a a Gibson Grabber bass that I I took the pickup out of one that was broken and then um, built my own bass. So it's like my own version of a Grabber. It's that's pretty awesome. cool. It's like all walnut. Um, that's my main thing. And then I have a couple other Gibson Grabber basses. Very cool. Yeah. Super bass. Right <clears throat> oh yeah. Duh. Uh, my 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 touring rig is a Fender Super Bassman, the the new version. Um, it's awesome. It's like super versatile, and it's it's through the Ampeg cab though. Yeah, through an Ampeg cab. Um, I'm pretty. Which we recorded with as well. Yeah, we recorded that. Yeah. Nice. So they awesome. know better than I do. How about you, Ryan? Is it all the same? Drum wise, it's pretty simple. I'm not much of a collector, so I kind of operate on like a one in one out kind of deal mm. um, but I play Q drums uh, I've been playing that since we came back from the hiatus mm. uh, Zildjian cymbals Vic Firth sticks Remo heads um, what size sticks uh, they are the Benny Greb signatures they're kind of a variation on a 5B oh, okay. Yeah. okay nice wood tip um, I just love the weight of them they're a little bit longer than a 5B Very kind of cool. a little more durable nice um, and live, I go pretty stripped down. Like, you know, we might get creative with cymbals or tunings and stuff like that in the studio, mm. but live is just basic. Nice. Basic kit. Cool. And then a uh, Roland SPDX for samples and stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. I forgot to mention my guitars, but I basically just have uh, like custom uh, Music Man Stingrays now. Oh, so. those are so cool. Um, some, some guys yeah, back here. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, they're they're doing like a, I think they're calling it like an artist series, but basically like just twenty five of like mine, which has like a stereo output, for the two uh, pickups go out separately, go separately into my Helix, so That's I can awesome. control with the pedal which ones on or off or blend them. Technology's uh, come so far, man. It's incredible it's what you can do. It's just amazing. 
Yeah, it's our John Petrucci wall. We gotta get a Dustin wall. <laughs> Put it right here. Put all your guitars up there. Running out. Well, I want to play a quick little game with you guys. I'm gonna call it your first instrument and do you still have it? So what was the first instrument you ever had and do you still have it? Uh, it was a red PV Predator. Uh, that was the first electric guitar. You still got it? Uh, it's at my parents' house. That counts. Because my mom doesn't want me to sell it. But um, Would you want to? I'm... Uh, to, to keep myself from being like uh, overly nostalgic, like I don't hold on to gear because... You look to the future. I respect I, well, that. Well, no, it's just that like I feel bad not having stuff that I'm not using it. Um, and yeah, I just I don't like that feeling. That also, a lot I, of integrity. Somebody I, don't have the, right? I don't have the money to like keep buying gear, so I sell gear to buy gear. Mm. So, um, Struggle's real, man. No. That's everybody. My, my setup right now I feel like is... Strong, like I don't have the itch. Everything nice. is just working mm. exactly how I want it to. I'm Perfect. Like, cool. Yeah, don't get the itch, man. It'll it'll destroy you. What do we got? First instrument. Do you, you guys still want have people it? to have the itch. We want them to have the itch. I want you to just go on tour and keep entertaining everybody. That's all I want. Uh, my first instrument was a classical guitar. I don't remember the brand, but I do have it. Nice. Uh, I think it. I think it has an esteem. How long have you esteem? had it? Uh, junior high, I would say. And so you don't know the brand. Steve, I think is that a is that a brand or maybe a I don't know something like that. Maybe. Um, base. Did it, did it come in a box with like lots of other stuff in it? No. Like picks and. I. I mean, I know it's classical. But they build little packs like that. I actually didn't have a case for it to start because. Uh, it was like a, a schoolmate of mine's father, mm. like was a distributor or something, and, nice. and did like repair work on him. Just gave it to me. That's great, but, um, man. Yeah, it's a pretty cool. pretty rad way to start. Tepe, first instrument. Do you still have it? Um, I guess first instrument would be piano. I think had like a CS eighty or something. No, no, no. Like a like an actual upright. Like a, really, uh, that was your first instrument? I think. Wow. Yeah. Um, awesome. I still have it. It's Very actually cool. like our family piano. It's in my house. That's awesome. We actually recorded. So you took control of it. It's your piano now. It is my piano. House. Yeah. Okay. I was just, I was an only child, so. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. I didn't know. Parents are like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great, no, we recorded some stuff with it. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. You recorded still... some stuff with your first instrument you ever owned. Yeah, I guess That's so. Awesome. I never really even thought about it. That's awesome. But yeah, it's like it's in our house. Our our kids play it now, and uh, yeah, it's like the family piano. Uh, first guitar. Was a Fender Prodigy? It's like a weird. I've never even heard of. Yeah, it was like an Prodigy. '80s thing. It was like, it's like Strat-ish body. Mm. Um, I think it, ha it has a humbucker, and then like a middle and neck single coil. That's cool. Yeah. Single know. single hum SSH. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, I still have it. Um, I don't that think make it, it has on the record too. <laughs> no, no. I don't think it has pickups in it. But I, I did I play it when we first started? I think I did. Yeah, I think that was my only guitar at first. So, yeah. so you ripped the pickups out, and now it's just hanging in a closet somewhere? Yeah. Nice, perfect. <laughs> I see how it goes. Uh, my first instrument was a trumpet, but it was a rental because I was taking trumpet in school. Nice. And then... We'll, we'll count the first purchase owned. Okay, towards the, towards the end of high school, I think I got like the starter level Ibanez electric guitar. Oh, those are cool. And I still have it. That's awesome, and man. And it sounds like crap, just like it did back then. But... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then first drum kit I bought off of, uh, or out of the recycler, mm, which is, okay. was like if you printed Craigslist out. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember those, the Music yeah. Post mags and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and that thing was a piece of crap. I got it for like 200 bucks, and mm. it was falling apart. So. Roto Toms came with it. Yes. You got a good deal. I'm just <laughs> I saying, did. man. That's yeah. great. Now, is there any piece of gear that like would just complete everything for you? Is there like a, a dream piece of gear that you guys have like individually or as a band that you've always been like, man, that would be really sick. A dream guitar, dream kit, dream synth. I mean, there's definitely like guitars that I would like obsess over at times and then have to just stop. Like, like newer that. stuff or vintage uh, stuff? I mean, I would never want something crazy vintage that I feel like I would just ruin, but 
uh, like those Gibson like Black Beauties with the, like like the staple. Um, like every one of the, Joe Bonamassa's Instagram photos, all those know. guitars. Just the like the ones that are like they've got a. I think they've got a P90 in the bridge, and then whatever those weird staple ones are. Um, do you like P90s? Uh, I do. I've played with them on and off over over time. They're a little delicate. You gotta. I mean, it comes with the territory. You gotta tweak it a little. They, yeah. they have, I feel like they have their place. Yeah, that's true. It's fair. Any any piece of dream gear for you guys? I don't know. I guess for me it would I had we had a lot of our gear stolen at one point. Really? Yeah. Pretty much everything. From a gig or something? Was that no, like the from worst our, gig? From our storage place. Really? Yeah. So basically anything that we didn't have in our practice place at that time we got stolen. Did they ever catch them? No, uh, yes, but they didn't get anything back. But I had I had a a black Les Paul custom that was like my guitar that like I had toured with for a long time and it was just kind of like you know like when you play a guitar a lot it's like your mm. thing. Nice. That was my my guy and he got stolen. Wow, that's so, so sad. Uh, that's awful. By the way, Damon, our our guitar tech actually at that mm -hmm. time he went on to become our tour manager. He texted me the serial number the other day. Oh really? He had that's it. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Anyway, yeah. So I'd, getting that back would be a dream. Very yeah. cool. Dream piece of gear, man. Dream piece Anything of you gear. you wish you had? Uh, I feel like I've got them. But uh, I, d I, I do wish that... that uh, you lay your head on the pillow and well, you're like, I have everything. There, <laughs> this is great. I mean, I mean, I found a thing that I haven't found a better thing which is the, the Gibson Grabber basses, but they haven't made them since, well, they reissued them, but they don't sound the same. Here's what, here's what Ed wants. Ed wants to be able to buy the Grabber pickups, but yeah. they're not made. There's a guy named Bill Lawrence that mm. makes pickups, and he made them at one point in time, but I've heard he's pretty uh, uh, guarded with his designs. I don't know when the new Grabber came out, that they just didn't use his old pickup because it didn't sound the same at all. Wow. So our uh, theory is there's some kind of like cross licensing thing, and the fact that he's not yeah. with mm -hmm. them anymore, neither of them make it. I yeah, don't know. it's weird. It's you gotta rely it's on the like, best sounding yeah. bass pickup. Well, it's or something, and hope for the best. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, like <laughs> the the pickups are epoxied. Yeah. So yeah. they're like you can't you can't take them apart unless you destroy it. But if you have one, you're not going to destroy it. So nobody. It seems like we've talked to our friends at Lawler about this and stuff, and it seems like nobody knows. It's, it's a like weird this mystery, weird yeah. mist black that cloud. That sounds like, like the yeah. wisdom of Solomon or something. We're going to epoxy <laughs> this. Is. You know, the, the real owner won't want it destroyed. Yeah. You know, that's wow. It's that's a pretty amazing. magical pickup, and I put it in bases that I've built, and they sound great. Wow. It's not saying like that your, I'm doing something magical. Your bass with. sound is. Yeah, but I also borrowed it. There was a guy named Caleb Schofield that passed away pretty recently, and um, he was the person basically that I found out about the grabber basses from, um, and it changed my life. And I'm sure it's changed a lot of people's life. But it's like a really dark sounding, almost like a P bass kind of tone. But it's it's magic. I don't. Nothing sounds like it. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, if there are more of those out there, I would get them. Very cool. Yeah, gotta gotta keep a lookout, man. Yeah, um, I have my sights set on a Q mahogany kit. We used one in the studio for the last record, and it sounded amazing. A mahogany kit. Yeah. Interesting, man. Yeah, those dudes. You hear make... a lot of birch. You hear a lot of maple. You don't hear a lot of people say mahogany. Yeah, that's Th interesting. Those dudes make amazing drums. Um, so that would be the kit, and then uh, I've had my eyes on a Elvis Costello Jazzmaster mm. oh, forever. Wow. Cool. So someday I'll get one of those. Well, guys, I'm going to end on this. Uh, you got a lot of fans out there. You know, we have a lot of people that wish they could be sitting in this seat right now answering these amazing questions. So for those who are sitting at home going, man, how do I get in that seat? How do I play this kind of music? Do you have any advice for the, the next generation coming up that just wants to be like Thrice? Our only advice for this ever is really like 
do what you love. Like, if you're gonna pursue this path, like, make sure you really love it because it's, like you're saying, it, it is can be grueling and like there's a lot of it that uh, very quickly like loses that like glamour or whatever. But you know, creating music that that you really believe in that never gets old. So uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I gotta as love far it. as like actual advice for just put in the work, play a bunch of live shows like. Playing live is what will make your band better. Um, Just try to write really great songs, huh? Yeah, you're gonna ha and you're gonna write some really dumb ones to get there. So. Yeah, and be okay with doing yeah. that. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, Palms is available anywhere you can find music. I found it on Spotify. That's easy enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, any anywhere else, any any place we need to send them. Thrice.net. Yeah. That. That'll pretty much take care of any questions anybody would have. Yeah. Socials, all that stuff. Anything Instagram, you guys want to plug? Instagram plug the Twitter tour. How can thrice. they get tickets on the tour? Uh, Thrice.net. Nice. Yeah. All encompassing. Album, website. merch, enamel pins with palms, and just any, anything you want. Any piece of Thrice, thrice gear. Goodies. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, on behalf of Sam Ash, we thank you so much for being here. Very grateful for your time. And we'll see you next time right here on the Sam Ash Spotlight.